Hey everyone, Sir Turbin here again. So it's been a while since we showcased any body bear decks, and I saw that Riot Briss was actually playing this body bear kind of control style and was doing really well in the America's rank ladder with it. Now, the idea with this deck is just like how it sounds, you're just playing Frelia Shadow House Control, which is not something that we're not familiar with, right? Like these two regions have always been like a combination. But the idea here is that you're kind of just playing for a more like Bali Bear as a finisher. We have She Who Wonders, which is really good against all the current mid range decks out there. Commander Legos to let us burn the opponent Nexus while also letting us level up the Bali Bear if for some reason we haven't, we don't have him leveled up and just kind of slowly control the opponent's board because the Bali Bear lets us just get rid of their blockers and we're able to push all this damage through, right? So it's a slow control deck, nothing new. But again, have been a while since we showcased Bolly Bear, so let's see how it goes. Hope you enjoyed the game's channel today. If you do, make sure to like the video below and subscribe to us. We post LOR videos every single day. You can also join our channel and become a member. We have two tiers, Gladiators and Champions. We have a personal goal of getting to 30 members on the first 30 days. We're so close to there, so any support that you can give us there will be really appreciated. You can find out more about that in the description below. Enjoy the games, and I'll see you at the end for some in-depth in in breakdown and mulligan tips. Enjoy. In this match, we're going to get Monte Cristo, who's playing Nila and Janna. So, we do have a lot of nice stuff for these matchups. But we don't really draw it, right? I think I want to see if I can get my Soul Harvest. is great. We can start the Nila here. Um... Eradication would be nice as well. Eradication would be really nice. The Dunning Shadow kind of stops their aggression. It's not a bad draw. Yeah, let's just go here. Let's just get rid of the Snail right now. Stop the opponent from getting that stuff into their deck. Uh, we can pass. And I guess threaten potentially another one. I mean, we can also pass because we want to play Mysticism next turn. If it's Janna, do we done in Shadow? If it's a Janna, do we done in Shadow? Probably not, right? I think we just ramp. I think we probably just ramp here. I don't know that I want to kill this Janna right now. Whoa! Well, this is the nice ramp then. I guess the opponent could have their 3 1. In which case, maybe we play the Sentry. Oh, it's just a. Uh... Yeah, let's start with the Sentry first. That way, if the opponent plays their. 3 1, we can just block with the sentry. No, all right. So, the fact that the opponent is playing big crash might lead me to believe that this is not the sunken tempo version of the deck as well. I might honestly just go ahead and attack with both, let them block, let them trade here if they want to. I'm okay with that. If we get She Who Wonders, we will be in such a good spot. Like, She Who Wonders will be so good. Um. I cannot discard the possibility of them playing Sunken Temple. Just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean that it's not a Sunken Temple version. The Big Crash usually means that it's not Sunken Temple, but you never know. Uh, this Bolivar is going to be so nice because we can go run into Bolivar. Okay. How about the party trick? That's it. Okay, so we just play Ron into Bali Bear and then just get Bali that way. Acorn. Acorn tells me that this is actually going to be a tie Dancer, right? The uh, Nila Boat. So this is a tie Dancer deck. The opponent gets to kill our Pioneer. We get to kill all their units next turn, but the opponent just gets Bali again. We do have this Bali Bear. Yeah, we can go like this. Opponent is going to have to start blocking. Opponent has to start blocking here. I think we even have access to harsh rings, to be honest. It's kind of funny. But uh, we, we're probably not going to play the harsh rings, of course. Right? We're probably just going to go down in shadow next turn. It kind of sucks not killing the elusive, by the way. But opponent probably has to block with it anyways. Like, they have to block with this anyways. I guess they could have a Nila, but the Nila gets punished by the Dunning Shadow. We have enough for... We have 12 mana, so we can actually play Dunning Shadow and Vengeance if necessary. 
The Bolivar is still pretty far away from leveling up, even if we attack with everything here. This is 18, 20, 22, plus 16, that's 28, 38. That's still not close enough to uh, for us to level up the Bolivar, unless we do like an avalanche. Janna. We'll attack with everything. Opponent has to block this too. No, they, I guess they're only going to block Bolivar. I mean, if they go down to 4 and not close to this... So, with Vengeance, Dunning Shadow, and Harsh Winds, I'm feeling pretty good here. Yeah, we have plenty of blockers as well. Like, we have blockers for days. We can just Dunning Shadows and Nila or the boat. We have Dunning Shadows for the Nila and the boat. And Vengeance afterwards. We have Harsh Winds. There's the tie. There's the tie dancer. Like we expect it. So um. Hmm. Hmm. Or do I just play the Dunny shot on Danila? Opponent will need to have two more cards to be able to actually get this Tide Dancer enabled. And we have Harsh Winds on top of that. I might just go for this Dawning Shadow and Danila. So the opponent will be able to give everything brash, but again, we have this harsh wind, so I'm not too scared about this just yet. We have two brash blockers and we have harsh winds, right? So I'm not scared of this everything getting brash here. Okay. Yeah, so we just kill the Nila here. The opponent can play one more card. But we, we fought the Nila in place, we're chilling. This also does minus two to everything. So it kind of counteracts the effect of the Tide Dancer. So it kind of stops the effect of the Tide Dancer, right? Killing the Nila means that we don't have to worry about the Brash being an issue. We have Harsh Winds, and if we block, we both run. Yeah, so if we block with both the Run and the Bolivar, we get to level up Bolivar and then just open attack with Bolivar. Yeah, like this is nice. Opponent can opponent can attack with this unit, but they have one mana. And we just harsh winds, block, block. Level of Bolivar. This is two four. We go down to nine. Am I scared of the burn? Okay, if the opponent gives us this, then I can just block this instead. So this actually helps us, because what that does now is that I can just go here. Yeah, I can just go like this, right? I can just go... I guess I can actually just block everything. I can go here, here. But the opponent can have the way to kill this Bolivar next turn. And if they do, I'm sad. Let's just take zero damage. We have another Overwhelm here. We'll take zero damage. We'll kill the Janna. The opponent can have a Mystic to kill the Ron. They cannot kill Bolivar. We take zero damage. Stay ourselves healthy enough at 13. Bolivar levels up. Um, because this is going to take me over to 50. With one mana, I guess opponent could technically have like a Howling Gale. But even the Howling Gale is not enough. We get the drop from the center. We get another Bolivar on top of it. And then we just attack and win again. Ah, perfect. So we have multiple overwhelms here. That can punish Lethal. My Bolivar spell kills all three units. Right? So my Bolivar spell kills all three units. This one gets overwhelmed from Bolivar. That's why we put Bolivar last. So this is Lethal. This is Lethal. This is Lethal. With 7 HP, I don't know that the opponent has a way to kill this Bolivar. And even if they do, we have another Bolivar coming after. Right? So let's say that they do have the way to kill Ron and Bolivar. If they have the way to kill both these units, we drew, we top deck the other body there, so we're able to push that four damage pretty easily to just burn the opponent out. So, no, didn't even need like a bigger allocation, just ended up getting the right cards at the right time. So, GG's.
in this match we're gonna against Nora and Heimer. So we do have these avalanches, which I think are gonna be really nice into them. I like the invocation of Thunder. This gives me the draw, but I also feel like I actually want to look for my ramp. The She Who Wonders is gonna be so good, right? Ooh, that She Who Wonders, if we can just if we can just ramp to She Who Wonders, I think we just blow out their whole hand. Eradication is also nice. I wanna ramp here. I think I'm just gonna ramp to the mysticism and ignore the conchologist. Because we can always stop the another ramp car and that will let us get even farther farther into the run. The she who won this is gonna be such a blowout. I mean I guess not early enough, right? Haha, <laughs> that's a nice card. The shines might actually help them, right? The shines might actually help them. Uh, to keep themselves out of range of the She Who Wonders, but they need to have like two shines on the same unit. That's unfortunate. We can go like this. So we can go Mysticism to ramp up. We can go Sentry next turn. Uh, I think I wanna actually block that portal now. I think I want to block that portal now and just let them draw the portal now rather than later so that we can potentially kill it with the She Who Wonders, depending on what it is. We don't have any more ramp. We don't have this eradication, which is nice. Opponent, yeah, I mean, yeah, like I, I wanted to have all these portals, right? Oh, they drew all three. So they drew all three already. So I think we just go eradication and just call it. And I think I'm going to eradication before that husk gets anywhere. Yeah, so we just go here. Get rid of everything. That's why I wanted them to have all the portals, right? So now we just get rid of everything. Opponent doesn't have enough mana to play Eclectic Collection. So um, they just lose the whole board. And they even give me the Nora too. Sign me up. They even give me the Nora. That's not bad. Again, we're gonna go for the She Who Wonders. Okay, opponent actually has the Soul Harvest, so that's fine. So, we can go run into She Who Wonders and just get value that way. I think that's worth it, right? I think we just go here. We lose the Ice Spell Archer, but there's not a lot else that we lose. That's what I was talking about. Actually, wait, this deals, this kills four. I thought this was only three, but this actually deals with the four cost units. Okay. Oh, but it doesn't stop that one. Yeah, we just go like this and you lose both your Heimer and this. They could get the turret right now, but we do have access here to Bali there to pop their units next turn. Right? We have the Harsh Winds. The thing is that if the opponent has another Nora or another Heimer, they get safe. Uh, because they be spells right now. Two shines, both on the Heimer, by the way. That's unfortunate. We only lose the Ice Bell Archer. Opponent kills the Trifarian. Doesn't lose anything else. So their whole hand is your spells, which probably means another champion. The problem is that this is going to be a lot of damage. Why do we go like this? Why do we go like this and just push 18? We push 18 so that the Bali Bear 2 damage here does the last... Because this is going to deal 2 to the enemy Nexus, right? So if we push 18, opponent showed us that they don't have any other units in their hand. Alright, opponent showed us they don't have any other units in their hand. So we just push 18 here, opponent goes down to 2, and then we can Bali Bear to finish the game. Opponent will have to have 3 units to stop this Bali Bear. So they need to hit the portal and summon another unit. They hit the portal, they hit two portals, so they, they get the value from that. They get the Glory Seeker as well. Hmm. What if it's correct for us to just play Ron? So I'm okay with this, right? Because we just win with Bolivar then, if the opponent goes for it this way. If the opponent goes for it this way, we just block here, and then we just go Bolivar, and the opponent has no, doesn't have enough blockers now. Not only that, but like the opponent is letting me level up this Bolivar, actually. 
Like, this is getting me so much, right? And then we just go like this. And that's four damage into the opponent's nexus. Because the opponent gave me all their blocks. And there we go. All right. I mean, we got to burn them out with Bolivar. You don't see that very often, but it happened, it happened there. So, GG's. In this match, we went against Scouts. This should be a good matchup for us. We do have access to that Eradication. Avalanche is really good as well. Eradication, Avalanche, Soul Harvest. Mm, I like this hand. Even the Invocation of Thunder, I think it's nice to get us that draw. We can just get rid of the opponent's units over and over again. For a, for a board-based deck like that, I mean, it sucks that we don't have any ramp, to be fair. But I just, ha I just have to get rid of enough units that I never feel like I'm in any pressure. One of those doesn't even have anything on turn. Okay. Now they could play Misfortune here, which will let them be able to stop the so high uh, the form. Like they could have form up, right? They could have form up. So if the opponent plays Misfortune, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play Invocation first. I'm one of the good guys. I don't want to go for the Soul Harvest. Because if the opponent has form up, that means that we get hit by 5 damage. I'm just going to go like this first. And I'm going to play this Soul Harvest after the attack. So that the opponent has to play form up with little value. Okay. This uh, Shield Wonders is going to be kind of nice as well, huh? The shoe one, this is gonna be really nice. Alright. So we can avalanche to start with. It's a queen. I'm still taking quite a bit of damage. If the opponent still has a form of that could be a problem. Might have been correct for us to play this colorly pioneer so that we could defend the open attack here. Okay, I guess we'll just go here. It's a nice coin though. Let's go like this. We'll take the four. Opponent didn't show us the formal, so I actually don't think that they have it. I feel like they also probably would have just saved the misfortune last turn. We'll take the four. Question is, do we take the other four? I think I'm gonna. I, I want the opponent to develop here. All right. I was down to get punished. I was down to get punished, and the opponent just pushed that four damage. But the opponent's probably thinking, why didn't you just avalanche then and prevent that four damage that you just took? Like if the opponent had actually attacked there, I would be going down pretty low. But the opponent didn't, so I'm kind of chilling. We go like this, and this enables our She Who Wonders next turn, and that should blow up the opponent's whole board. Like this is so good because it hits the cards that are high in the opponent's hand, right? So. No matter what the opponent has here, the she who won this is going to be just so nasty. And it's such a good blocker that the opponent cannot do anything about it. They even let me take the 8. Yeah, you're... Okay. They could push some damage here, but I'm, I'm sure they're going to develop, right? Like, this doesn't make sense. They could go for champion strength right away, but we have harsh wins. And that's the game. And that's the game right here. The she who won. This is why this matchup is so good for us, because literally this just completely stops anything that the opponent wanted to do. Now we do lose our units as well, but the opponent has to have blockers here. Yeah, nice hand. We just open attack and win the game. <laughs> the opponent has to have blockers, and there's no blockers that they have in their deck that survives she who wonders, except for Jenny, and the opponent had already tapped out of Jenny, so. GG's. In this match, we're going against Garen, Jarvan, and Galio. Garen, Jarvan, Galio. So just formidables. So Harvest is nice. Dunning Shadow is okay. The Prophets are whatever, to be honest. The Prophets are whatever. I think I want to see more removal. I actually want to see more removal. The ramp would have been nice as well. The Harshmish is no, I guess not useless because opponent does have Garen as well as uh, Jarvan, so it's not useless. Let's go ahead and just pop this. We do play Eradication if we ever get it. So we do play Eradication. 
It's pretty ceaseless sentry. One is gonna let me draw, which is nice because this is gonna be a good blocker into the second set at the second bag of attack. Not what we're looking for. The harshwinds does nothing for us. Second soul harvest is nice though. I'll take that. No need to attack here because we'll just block a next time. Opponent gets the freaking challenger. Opponent gets the challenger. Yeah, I guess the harshwinds is not gonna be as useless as I thought. Right, because the opponent has like all these units. Uh, the opponent. Okay, that ruination is hot. That ruination is really nice. Really, really nice. Wow. I like it. I like it. I mean, I'll let them take whatever they want here. I'll let them take whatever they want. We'll go here. We'll go run next turn. The, I guess the opponent, ha opponent probably picked the. So then here for this one, we'll pop it. I guess the opponent probably picked the uh, the, the excavation, right? If they have the excavation, I still should probably just play Ron, right? I don't think there's any reason for me not to play Ron here and just force him to use that two mana. Like if they have it, they have it. Yeah, if they have it, they have it. I think I force him to go for the excavation and destroy the landmark. Because we don't even have a way to actually use take advantage of it. So it's just a, it's just forcing the opponent to use that two mana right now. Which is less mana for later. If they go for Jarvan, I think I'm down to go for these harsh ones. Or just straight up vengeance, actually, maybe. Hmm. What's your play? Because the problem here is the Galio, right? The Galio is kind of annoying. We do have Dawn in Shadow to remove the Galio's spell shield. I just pass. Strike, strike, kill the Vaughn. Okay, they do have it. Okay, so they do have Desperation. Right. They do have this Excavation, right? You can do whatever you want. Um, I think I attack with it right now, to be honest. I think this is a nice 8 damage. Opponent's gonna try to play Jarvan here. Do we Ruination right now? Do we Ruination right now? Or do we just Harsh Winds? I kinda just like the Harsh Winds into Mysticism and just ramp up. We can... The problem is the Jarvan still levels up, right? The Jarvan still levels up regardless. I forgot about that. I forgot about that, that the Jarvan level sub no matter what. Yeah, the Jarvan level sub no matter what because he survives the strike from my unit. We can throw the vengeance on it when the opponent goes for the three mana on the Cataclysm. I don't want him to get a Naka, to be honest. Okay, with a second vengeance, that makes me feel nice. I don't want them to get the, the, the Anaka, right? So I think we just go here. Just bend your Senna before they, before you can get the barrier. So we'll bend your right now before you can get the barrier. This could turn, this is technically become a 6-6. Six, six. I don't want to give them Anaka. So that's one Jarvan gone. Opponent still has, I guess, I, they only played one Galio as well. Is what it's either they're either in 2 2 2 or 3 2 1. Let's say that they're in 2 2 2. Because I don't know, again, that's why I don't know why people are playing this instead of just playing Udi. Like, I feel Udi is so much better. So, they, they no matter what, we know they only have one more Jarvan left. So, no matter what, they only have one more Jarvan left. Okay, the opponent's gonna take the strike here before this guy gets bigger. Don't think I care, to be honest. Um, if we go like this, just push the A, have the opponent play form up, and then we just have... Sh we have, like, a lot of stuff for next turn. If you want to take the 8 again, that's good with me. Alright. Like, this is just slowly letting us level up our Udia. And we have this ruination just in the back of our in the back of our hand, just ready to do whatever we needed to do. I 
I guess the ruination has to be for champion strength, right? The ruination has to be for the champion strength? You still don't survive that. Alright. Let's just go like this. Let's just go like this and... Yeah, opponents out of resources. Even if they have champion strength here, it doesn't matter. We just go Ice Bell Archer and just chill. Uh, let's go here. Let's get the equipment destruction and just pop the, uh, the Anaka. So that we have to wear the Anaka anymore. At some point, we'll draw the Bolivar and just win the game. I, yeah, like opponent knows they're kind of done. Because they use so many resources here just for me to harsh went that away. And then the still they don't get to push anything. So it's kind of like a nice deck against those formidables as well. Opponent, we didn't even have to use eradication and we still just got there. So GG. In this match, we got against LeBlanc and Ash. We do play Ruination. Which might be necessary, right? The Avalanche is also not bad, to be honest. I kind of don't like the fact that I don't have any ramp, though. So I think I'm just going to Mulligan. I'm going to Mulligan. The... Eh, I don't mind this. I don't mind this. The Soul Harvest is kind of... I guess it's not useless. I do play Ice Bell Archer. The She Who Wonders is useless in this match. Okay, double Soul Harvest when we don't have any freezes. It's a little bit annoying, though. Yeah, we'll go like this. If you want to kill this right now, be my guess. Unfortunately, we didn't get our ramp even after hard mulliganing for everything. Yeah, I mean, if you want to freeze this, I'm okay with this. Okay. I just want to get my draw at this point, right? Like, my hand is so bad. Like, like look at this hand against that deck. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. So many different answers that I could have got in here. Ah, this 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 is what this is what kind of makes me like this is what makes me think that this deck is not good is when stuff like this happens. Yeah, at least we get to do this and have another blocker for the glory seeker. And get to start ramping into our body bear. If you want to give me another freeze or another heal, that's okay. Yeah, like the, the more that the more that they use this now, the better it is for our body bear later. Um. What a tease! What a tease this hand is. We fight for one Yep. So we're gonna have to like. How? How? In the one matchup where this is completely useless, how do we get them all? How do we get them all in the one matchup that this is completely useless on? Time to make an appearance. I think we just dropped the avalanche, right? Opponent has shown us a sky splitter and a litter of iron, so at the very least we kill one of them. We get to kill two. That's pretty good. Still not enough to get us there though next turn because we still need one more mana for the body there. I'll keep the mana in case I go for another invocation. No? Okay, let's heal. Let's heal and vengeance whatever the opponent summons here. Yeah, let's just vengeance this girl here. Then we're gonna have to body there next turn. And uh, I guess we get to kill quite a bit of units. Ah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe we act this game is actually even close. Come on. Come on. Like, so many different outs that I could have gotten, and I'm literally getting the cards that I don't need, right? Like, I'm getting the cards that are completely useless in this matchup. I don't care. I'll give you my Bali Bear. I guess opponent can just bloody business this Bali Bear and attack for sits. I will give you my body bear here. Yeah, I'll give you my body bear, because if I get another body bear, I'm cool with this. I just cannot believe this hand. Cannot believe this hand. Oh my goodness. Ay, ay, ay. Um. Anaka, so we gotta pop the Anaka, right? We gotta pop the Anaka because that gives them another unit. I don't want them getting another unit for free. 
I guess we can go she who wanders next turn and lose a blocker. Ledros is not bad. Let's go she who wanders. Let's just get rid of their omen hub. This is such a good blocker into them. I think I like this. Harsh wins? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So we lose the shield. We lose the shield wonders. Opponent loses the almond hawk and another card, which was the prophet. Oh no, the ambassador. So they lose an ambassador. Their units start to get big, but now you have to start worrying about this Ledros actually killing your boar. Still no ice bell archer. Still no harsh winds. Right? Like if we get our own harsh winds, opponent will get so punished. How? How did we win this game? Half our hand is useless. How did we win this game? That's why you will never convince me to play Ashley Blood. Because how can the opponent lose that game? You can never convince me to play Ashley Blood because of that reason. Like that deck is just not consistent enough. So hey, geez. welcome back everyone. Hope you enjoyed those games of Bobby Bear Control. Honestly, the deck is really good against like this mid-range decks, right? Like you saw us against Formidable, you saw us against Scouts. You can do well against Yana Mila, I think, as well, in, in, if you get the right hand, especially if you're able to kind of ramp up and have the Chi Who Wonders, or if you have the Eradication, the Avalanche, etc. Like, you can do well against this Boar Sentry decks. Against other decks, though, if you go against any other control deck or anything like a Cosmic Cold deck, it feels really bad because this deck doesn't have a lot of draw. They can obliterate your commander Ledros. They don't really get punished by stuff like She Who Wonders as much, right? And they don't really care about stuff like Avalanche. So, like, those matchups are a little bit more complicated. And I think it's what kind of holds this deck back. Because it can be pretty bad against, again, a lot of those control and other slow type of style decks that you might run into. Now, uh, in terms of, like, the strategy here, it is just buy your time, right? Just disrupt the opponent's game plan. Ramp in the meantime when you can. Vengeance their units, you know, don't even shadow their units, eradication, so harvest, avalanche, right? Like buy yourself the time that you need by just slowly ramping up. You have a good matchup into this boar sentry decks. Just let them develop their boar as you saw us punishing that scouts play with the second avalanche. And just take advantage from there, right? Just kind of slowly, slowly find your places where you're taking disadvantages and be able to just pop the opponent, kill their units, etc. etc. Uh, and that's really what you want to do until then you can just build up to this body bear which gets rid of the rest of their board or she who wonders which gets rid of their whole hand in some cases as you saw against the scouts player and just kind of go from there it is a slow deck you're not going to level up body bear pretty quickly but the idea is that you have so much removal and some of these cards like body and she who wonders remove the opponent's blockers from the field that the opponent is forced to have another blocker otherwise you're going to get smacked by 10 damage to the face which can be really powerful against any deck out there. In terms of Mulligan, I'm looking for my ramp, right? I'm looking for my ramp cards for the most part. So the Wild Mysticism is what I want to look for. The time Invocation of Thunder and the Prophet are my second priority. Of course, if you run against a, a heavy board presence deck, you might keep your Avalanche or you might look for your Education or Soul Harvest, depending on what the matchup is. But ideally, in most matchups, you want to ramp first and then remove stuff second depending on what, you, what you're able to do, what, what, what opportunities you have. So that's going to be your general mulligan and your general strategy. That's going to be it for us today. Hope you enjoyed today's games. Riot Brist, this is a very cool deck. So thank you again to Riot Brist for the idea. Uh, if you like our content, make sure to like it below and subscribe to us. We post a lot of our videos every single day. You can also join our channel and become our member. We have two different tiers, Gladiators and Champions, each one with the different perks. For example, our Gladiators get access to some cool emojis and our Champions get access to an extra video every single week. With that said, I want to give a huge shout out to Alex Bergara and Regular Bear, our two newest gladiators that just joined our channel. I appreciate all the support. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitter we stream every now and then, and you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.